I recently had the opportunity to explore Muscat, the capital of Oman, and I fell in love with its warmth, beauty, and vibrancy. As my first time in the Middle East, it was a city unlike any other I'd visited. We spent three glorious nights at the five-star Chedi Muscat Hotel. This enchanting hotel is set against the backdrop of the Al Hajar Mountains on one side and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Oman on the other. The Chedi comprises 21 acres of impeccably landscaped gardens that lead to a pristine private beach. It really feels like a true oasis. Hello. So we have just arrived in Muscat. We did an overnight flight. So the flight is seven hours from the UK and it was an overnight flight, but obviously, because it's only seven hours, you actually don't really get to sleep much. And like most people, I don't really sleep on planes. So I'm feeling a little bit zombie-esque at the moment, but I'm gonna power through and try not to nap until I go to bed this evening, but we'll see how that goes. But yeah, we have arrived in Muscat. We are staying at the Chedi, which I'm super excited about because it's a really like iconic luxury hotel in Amman. Yeah, so I'm very excited to have you along with me. We're staying just for a long weekend, so we're only here for three nights, but we're seeing plenty. So today is a pretty chill day to sort of recover from the flight. And then tomorrow we're going sightseeing around Muscat. And then um, the day after that, we're going on a boat trip to some islands, hopefully see some sea turtles. Inside, the interiors comprise elements of Omani culture, from traditional lanterns to art pieces. I loved the sense of place and authenticity that these small touches added to the guest experience. If, like me, you love an aesthetically pleasing hotel, then you will love the symmetry of the design. It is extremely satisfying and impossibly elegant. Contrasts of black and white popped beautifully against the lush green backdrop of palm trees and blue skies. The sound of trickling water can be heard throughout the grounds. It really feels as though every detail has been designed to make you feel at ease. Total Zen is the name of the game here. On our first full day, we headed off to explore the city. First on our tour was the Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque. Good morning. So we are currently at the Grand Mosque in Muscat. And unfortunately, two members of our group didn't actually get in. Um, very strict with the dress code. I actually bought um, an abaya before I came. I'm glad I did now. Because yeah, even um, one of the ladies who lives here didn't get in. So yeah, I think our guide said it can depend on like, which security guard is on. So yeah, just definitely something to remember if you come. Just be really careful with abiding by the dress code. Gonna explore. It's already quite busy, unfortunately. So um, yeah, there are a lot of people around, but it's beautiful. completely captivated by the intricate details from the sparkling chandeliers to the impossibly large Persian carpet that adorns the prayer hall. Every nook and cranny of the Grand Mosque is breathtaking. I definitely recommend visiting with a guide so you can uncover all the interesting facts and insights about it. We then headed to our first souk of the trip. We visited Fanja, a smaller and more authentic souk. Here they primarily sell pottery and crockery. There was an overpowering smell of fish at Fanja as they have large pans of white bait on sale at the souk. Special shops only to do it for you, and they will charge you 15 riyal, 20 riyal to do it for you one time. We then made our way to the Mutra Corniche. The pretty promenade is lined with palm trees and is a great place to start with a leisurely stroll. But Mutra is perhaps most famous for its souk, where you'll find a maze of shops selling all kinds of products, from clothing to pottery. We stopped for lunch at a traditional Amani restaurant. The food was delicious, and it was a great way to experience some authentic cuisine in a gorgeous setting. We then made our way to Old Muscat. 
which is flanked by rocky hills and two ancient forts. We paid a visit to the Sultan's Al Alam Palace. While the palace itself is not open to the public, I still think it's worth stopping by. For a cultural hit, there are a handful of museums in the area too. Finally, we made our way to the Royal Opera House. As with the Grand Mosque, I was completely blown away by the grandeur of the Royal Opera House. Honestly, the floors were so impeccably clean and shiny that they practically sparkled in the sunlight. Even if you're not an opera fan, a visit to the Royal Opera House is still one of the best things to do in Muscat, if only for its architecture and grand interiors. Of course, if you are a fan of opera and the arts, then do try to catch a live performance if you can. The grand setting would undoubtedly make for a truly special performance. It was then back to the hotel to relax at sunset Set, and then have a delicious al fresco dinner. a boat trip to the Daymaniat Islands. The islands can be found around 18 kilometers off the coast of Oman, not far from the city of Muscat. The majority of trips depart from Al Muj Marina in Muscat. It takes around 45 minutes by boat and the boat trip itself is definitely part of the fun. A hidden gem in the Gulf of Oman, these islands are a haven of tranquility and a hub of marine life. The highlight and main draw of visiting the islands is snorkeling, as its clear blue water lends itself perfectly to diving. The waters around the islands are teeming with tropical fish in a rainbow of different colours, but the real highlight for me was seeing and swimming with the sea turtles. If you're really lucky, you may also see the endangered whale sharks. They're the largest shark and the largest fish in the sea, but don't worry, they aren't aggressive. More like gentle giants. While snorkeling and scuba diving are the main attractions, there are a couple of other things to do in the islands. The first is simply to enjoy a spot of sunbathing and relaxation in the beautiful surroundings. I can't think of many better places to chill out than on the white sands of the Daymanyat Islands with the sound of the lapping waves in the background. We're on our little island boat trip today. So we're doing a bit of island hopping and we've just been snorkeling and we saw some sea turtles, which is really exciting. I've never seen sea turtles before or some of them. So yeah, that was incredible. And we're just at another island now, just exploring. It's so beautiful. The water is like gorgeous turquoise. See it behind me. Yeah, the sand is gorgeous and we're gonna have some lunch here, like a little barbecue lunch on the beach. Yeah, it's beautiful. As part of our tour, our guides also set up a barbecue on the beach for us, which was such a lovely touch. Complete with a gorgeous rug, comfy cushions and gazebo to shelter us from the hot sun, it was a wonderful way to refuel after all the excitement of snorkeling. then returned to the hotel where I had the dreamiest massage in the spa. After our final dinner, it was time to head home the next morning. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. It means the world when you do.